Hello, this is Mr. Collier, and today we're going to be solving a few different uh, types of trig problems. Okay, and the first uh, problem we have here, it says a triangle has side lengths 5, 12, and 14 centimeters. Is this triangle a right triangle? Explain why or why not. Okay, so in this problem, actually, uh, we're going to actually use the Pythagorean theorem for this problem. So it's not really trig, but we use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this problem. Now, if it were, let's assume it is a right triangle. If it were a right triangle, then we have the measurements 5, 12, and 14. So you have to ask yourself, which one would be the hypotenuse? And that would be the longest side, which is 14. So if this is a right triangle, then the, the longest side is 14, so that would be the hypotenuse. So this should be this equation should be true if it is a right triangle. So 14 squared should equal 5 squared plus 12 squared. Okay, the hypotenuse squared should equal the sum of the two legs squared. So let's work that out. Um, let's work out 14 squared. Okay, 14. We can use a calculator. There's our squared button. 15 squared is 196. So let's see what happens. 196 equals 25 plus 144. Okay, actually, let me write it this way with a question mark because we're testing to see if, if these two quantities are equal. So we have 196 equals, and this is 169. Okay, so that's actually not equal. So the hypotenuse squared is not equal to the sum of the... Uh, leg squares, so this can't be a right triangle. Okay, so then we can say, therefore, this is not a right triangle. Okay, so that's how you show if a triangle is or is not a right triangle. And this example here, um, I'm going to show you two ways to do this one. All right, the first way uses trig, so we want to find AC, so I'll call that X over here. And we want to find this out. We're going to need some more information here. Okay, but firstly, let's notice that we have, actually we have two triangles here. We have the small triangle, and we have this larger triangle. Okay, so this might be easier to figure out if I draw the, redraw this uh, using the two separate triangles. And... Notice that angle, actually I'll do that after. So I'm going to draw these two triangles separately, and maybe that'll help us see things better. So I'm going to draw this small blue triangle here is 6 and 15. Okay, and then the bigger green triangle is going to be x over here, and 30 plus 15, that's 45. Okay, but notice that we have B is in both triangles, so this is the same angle in both triangles. This is angle theta. So if we want to use trigonometry, this is the key here. Um, this triangle, we have two side lengths, so we can find theta, and then we can uh, use that in our, in our other triangle, the green triangle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to write Sokoto on the top here first. Okay, so, so, uh, toa. So in this triangle here, we have the opposite and the adjacent. So I'm going to work out um, the angle using opposite and adjacent. So opposite and adjacent would be tangent. So I'm going to use tangent here. So tan theta equals 6. Okay, I made a bit of a mistake here. I need to, uh, this here is 15 here, so this should be 15 as well. Let me just fix that first. Okay, so that's 15. So tan theta is 6 out of 15. So theta equals inverse tan of 6 fifteenths. Theta approximately equals, so I'm going to do inverse tan of 6 fifteenths. Uh, inverse tan. 6 divided by 15, okay, about 21.8. So theta is about 
21.8 degrees. Okay, so that's the same as this data in here. Okay, so now we have theta, and we have a side we can find x in the second triangle. So I can again use tangent, tan theta, or actually I can write tan of 21.8. Tan of 21.8 equals x out of 45, and then I can uh, multiply both sides by 45. Get x equals 45 tan 21.8. Okay, so let's work that out. 45 times 45 times tan of 21.8. I can actually use the answer that's stored in the calculator there. That will take 21.8 and all the decimal parts after that to get the most accurate answer. And we get 18. So we get x equals 18. Okay, so that's how you do it the trig way. Let me show you another way we can do it. I'm going to write this one in yellow so you can see the difference. Um, so you might remember that if these angles have exactly the same angles, which they do, if these uh, triangles have exactly the same angle measurements, and they're similar triangles. So if I look at the longer leg of each of these right triangles, this one's 15, this one's uh, 45, so that's three times as large, right? So that means that the shorter leg is also going to be three times as large, so I can multiply by three. Six times three is 18, so I get x equals 18. Okay, same thing. Um, you can use trig to find this problem, but it's not the easiest way to solve this problem. Okay, now one more example. This one requires some thinking. Okay, explain why sine 80 is greater than cosine 80. Use the triangle as part of your explanation. So let's actually Let's find these values on the calculator first to see what we're talking about here. So we have sine sine 80 equals 0.9848, blah, blah, blah. And let's do cosine 80, and let's see what happens. We get 0 0.1736 and so on. So sine 80 is a lot bigger than cosine 80. 80, and let's uh, draw a diagram to see what's happening here. Okay, so I'm gonna maybe I'll draw you know, I'll draw a diagram in blue or something. Okay, so let's draw a right triangle. Let's try to make a 80 degree angle. So it's gonna be very steep, close to a 90 degree angle. So anyway, we'll call this call this uh, the right angle here. Uh, let's let's uh, so actually redraw the whole thing. I don't like the way that one came out. Actually, maybe I'll use this triangle tool right here. Okay, so if I have this triangle, and let's call this one over here the right angle, and this one's 80. Okay, so here's our, our 80 degree angle. All right, so if we have an 80 degree angle, and of course, this is going to be the hypotenuse. Okay, this is going to be opposite. And this is going to be adjacent in reference to this 80 degree angle. So if we look at sine 80, sine 80 that equals opposite over adjacent, and sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. Pardon me. So that's opposite out of hypotenuse. Cosine 80 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so basically we have two fractions here, right? So if you look at the fractions, they both have the same denominator. They both have the same denominator, but if we look at the size in the triangle, this side, because it's opposite the bigger angle, the 80 degree angle, this one's going to be a bigger or a larger side than this one. This one's going to be smaller. Okay? So we're going to have a, for sine, we're going to have the opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be a bigger number out of, 
or the hypotenuse, which is the same number. And for the cosine, we're going to have adjacent, which is a smaller number, okay, over the hypotenuse. Okay, so a so like for example, if we have a bigger number out of let's say we have eight tenths and six tenths. Which one's bigger? The one with the bigger numerator. So because sine 80 has a bigger numerator, then, then uh, sine 80 is going to be bigger than cosine 80. Okay? So you could say something like, because, oops, because uh, the side opposite uh, 80 degrees is larger is larger than the side adjacent to 80 degrees the sine of 80 degrees is also larger because it has a larger numerator. Okay, something like that. Okay, so you can show the show the diagram, show the fractions that you get, show that you get uh, a bigger number with the same denominator so that you get a bigger value for sine of 80 than you do of cosine.